Hey guys, uh, today I wanted to share a very interesting story about a, a person who sold cards to Alpha Investments for, so I'll just give you the exact numbers. I have this in email, I, ha I made a video about this and how do I know these two cards are exactly the same cards that were offered to me? The, uh, they were BGS cards or PSA cards and so they had a serial number. And the serial number would match up um, so Rudy made a video saying he bought these two cards for $375. These cards were offered to me at like a good discount. I, I like, you know, hey, Rudy's real interested. And, uh, and I didn't really, I actually don't know what that means, but I don't know what it means now. So these cards were offered to me at 750. I made a video about it. The guy who saw the video got so upset because the cards today are worth at least $6,000, maybe more. Their PS, I think it's a BGS or PSA 10, uh, Foil Yagamir's Hollow, which is a reserve list card from Urza's Legacy. So we're talking about, you know, a PSA 10. I think it's at the time it was the only PSA 10. I don't know if there's more, but it was, and then a, another Foil Powder Keg, which I think is also on the reserve list. I think that was a PSA 9 or something, uh, 8.5, 9.5, something like that. It wasn't a 10. So the big card was the Yagamera's Hollow. That card alone can probably fetch six thousand, seven thousand dollars in, in today's market. And, and by the time he, so that transaction happened years ago, and the guy finally saw the video today. Or I made the video maybe a year or two ago, maybe a year ago, and then he was so offended because I, again, I understand he lost a lot of money. This dude sold some, uh, I mean, the I, I put the value at 4,000. I know in a Dallas show, if I had those two cards, I could easily flip them for 4,000. And he sold it to Rudy for $375, according to Rudy himself uh, in that video. Now, it was offered to me that same day that he sold to Rudy, or a very similar time span, you know, maybe a day or two later, for 750. And that was supposedly a good deal because he enjoyed my channel and whatnot. And I have his real name. It's it's kind of crazy. Like it, it really blows my mind that he got so upset because he thought the video was defamation, right? He was gonna sue me for defamation. Uh, I was like, what? <laughs> like, wait a second, why? Th these are just numbers, right? You offered to me 750. I think it's probably worth 550 or 600 at the time. And you eventually sell to Rudy the very next day or the same day for 375 for half of what you offered me. So either Rudy is like the best negotiator ever or like something like, and like it got to the point that the he, he Rudy bought for so cheap, the guy's trying to sue me for defamation for calling him out on it. And uh, there's another video that Rudy, and I, I'm glad that Rudy's honest about this, where um, I think a seller, a guy with a lot of really valuable old boots, if he just held on, and isn't that the story, right? If you just held on a tiny bit longer, you could get double the amount of money. But he had booster boxes of Alverson Restored, Innistrad, he had to all, you know, returned around the guy. He had a lot, he was doing the Rudy method of buying booster boxes. It's on Rudy's channel. And then Rudy then buys these booster boxes off him for 10 cents on the dollar. Some of them, the same exact ones he sold to him. And it was like, yeah, that's really good. I mean, um, so when you talk about MTG Finance, I try to make it more general, more vague. I mean, let's be honest, you're not gonna get Rudy prices. You might not even get MTG line prices. The guy who sold it was trying to sell these car, two cards for me for 750. He probably would sell it to you for 1500, maybe 2000. And he would call that a good deal. And that's the big gap that you have to understand is many of you will be like, oh, hey, you bought this collection at this price and that price. Um, yes, but I'm looking at Rudy and say, wow, he bought it, you know, the same exact collection, he paid 50% less than I would have to pay. And then you might be looking at that and say like, oh, this collection revised, you paid less than I would pay, or this collection of Pokemon. And, and that's just it. I mean, if you have a YouTube channel of any amount of subscribers, then yeah, you will bump into people who wanna sell it to you. And if they come to sell it to you, that's a very different ball game than if you're like trying to find Craigslist and things. So if you come to them and you're just like, yeah, hey, I'm interested in buying, that's a very, you're not gonna get a, as a good a deal because that person may not sell. I mean, they, their options are much more wide, right? It's like playing poker, their options, they have much more, a higher range of things they can do than if someone comes to you, or your physical store. 
So the majority of my collections, they're done locally in Houston. Um, and that's the only reason, the only reason I can get a collection for about the same, uh, I will always pay more than Rudy and you will always pay more than Rudy because he has a fan base. He has the views, he has, you know, a, rep good, a really good reputation. And um, so he's always gonna be able to accumulate think, collections on 10 cents on a dollar. I'm trying to accumulate collections on best buy list and then plus 10% on the buy list if it's a older card, especially if it's a card on the reserve list or dual land, I definitely would do 10% plus whatever best buy list. And then you can combine buy lists and so on. And uh, so I do get offers to, hey, this is my collection, but I know for a fact that they've taken it to Rudy first and Rudy has just flat out turned them down. And that point is like, how, how much do I actually want this collection? Probably not a lot. And um, so like I do get a lot of offers for bulk vintage cards, like bulk legend. Like I'm talking about like really, really the worst cards in legends. And I'm just like, no, no, not for me anymore. I know, and then I know some of you guys actually would love to buy that stuff. But again, you know, it's kind of like a hierarchy, right? So the best deals I've ever done, because Rudy's online, Rudy will send you the shipping thing. You're not gonna be able to compete with Rudy to buy a good collection. It's just not gonna happen. Um, the best deals I have done have always been in person in Houston, and that's because they don't wanna ship it to Rudy. They'd rather have it done in person, and then once it's done at this exact table, it's done, right? Here's the cash, here's the check, here's whatever, it's done. What is done is done. And I've been able to buy a large amount of collections um, and Weiss, I've been able, I picked up another Weiss, a large collection in Weiss might be considered $700. I mean, it's not, I mean, the, the per value per card is not that high. Um, a large collection of Star Wars or Star Trek might be $700 to $1,000. That would be a, considered a large collection. Now for Magic the Gathering, I mean, I've been able to hit on some really, really nice stuff recently and that's all been local. And could I ever compete? So if I, if somebody wanted to sell these two cards, they would want, if Rudy told them, hey, I want it for free, they would send it to Rudy for free. I, I'm not even exaggerating. If I wanted it, they would charge me a premium on it. And again, this is a one example. So the, one, the reason I use this one example is it's provable. The PSA numbers match up. I mean, it's provable. I made a video about it. The, the evidence is there. Now, there are a lot of other collections I can't really prove or did they sell part of it? Did they sell whole of it? It's a little bit more complicated, right? In this case, it's two PSA cards, one PSA 10 Yagamir's Hollow, which is the main chase card, and one, which is foil. Uh, it's a foil Yagamir's Hollow. So it's a foil reserve list ca card, which is rare on itself. And I think it's the only PSA 10 at the time. Guy takes it to me, says Rudy's interested. He, he asked for 750. I said, that sounds kind of high. Then he said, oh, Rudy's really interested. And then eventually he sells it to Rudy for free 75. The cards today, I think the, the hollow itself is probably worth 4,000 at least. I would say six to 7,000. I mean, PSA 10 is really hard and a PSA 10, I mean, magic foil, imagine getting a PSA 10 on a modern magic foil today. It would just be difficult to do. And then that card, I mean, it, it's just rare. It's rare. And to get a PSA 10 on a foil reserve list card, the number of foil reserve list cards itself are, is incredibly rare, but to get a PSA 10, I think it's a one of one. It used to be a one of one when he was trying to sell it a year or two ago. And then imagine the guy getting so upset that now he's going to sue me for defamation on his character, even though I just mentioned the name. Like, you know, I have this email where he's trying to sue me for defamation and it's pretty sad that like he's so embarrassed, you know, and this is a quote MTG finance guy. This is a guy who owns, I think 40 lightning dragon foils or something like, obviously he's doing this as a speculation. Obviously he is quote MTG financing, but uh, I guess Rudy got him. Hi guys.